reading some of the papers that I've got off the internet, things they've said, and I've seen them say a lot of the same things on TV. There was a preacher named A.A. A. Allen back in the 50s. He's dead now, and he was a miracle healer and all of this, and he used to come to Fort Worth when I was a kid, and he'd have up there, he had a big tent up there, and he'd have sawdust. They used to put sawdust down, and he'd have this huge tent, and he'd say, uh, come and we'll pray and your appendix will grow back and your tonsils will grow back now. <laughs> and that's the truth. And he'd say, and we'll have men pray for you and your teeth will, will be filled with gold. Why wouldn't he pray that your teeth will be, go back the way they were and they will be all enamel? Huh? Why didn't he pray for that? Instead of being filled with gold. Well, here's a little bit on A.A. A. Allen. A.A. A. Allen scanned his father. Oh, by the way, R.W. Schambach was one of his young associates when he used to come to Fort Worth. He was a young man back then. A.A. A. Allen scanned his followers by asserting that he could command God to turn dollar bills into 20s. <laughs> come and turn them into 20s. Uh, he is one of the early men to offer prayer cloths anointed with the miracle oil and then A. Allen offered miracle tent shavings. He would take the, he would take the shavings off the floor. My father even put up some tents and put those uh, shavings on the floor so it would be warm in the wintertime. And uh, then he launched a brief Raise the, de <laughs> Raise the Dead program, just a brief one. <laughs> of course it died. That's why they got it down here. <laughs> And Alan told adherents that he was very big in the 50s. Did anybody remember him from the 50s, old people? Yeah, Jim remembers him. Alan told adherents that God had given him a new anointing and a new power to lay hands on the believers who gave $100 towards the support of our ministry outreach and bestow upon each of them power to get wealth. <laughs> what A.A. A. Allen was doing bothered authorities of the Assemblies of God even. Now, they are a bunch of Pentecostals, and most of them have become charismatics. Uh, and then he go, A. A. Allen dogmatically claimed that he could raise people from the dead. He actually launched a Raise the Dead campaign in the mid-60s. Thankfully, it died when his disciples refused to bury their departed, <laughs> and their departed refused to come back from the dead. <laughs> Some of these guys are characters, aren't they? And you will hear Rod Parsley, when he has... One of his best buddies is R.W. Schambach, and they will both uh, refer endearingly to A.A. A. Allen, this wacko. Allen was eventually kicked out of the Assemblies of God denomination when he jumped bail. <laughs> Isn't that a funny sentence? He was kicked out of the Assemblies of God when he jumped bail after being arrested for drug driving. Oh, by the way, he, he died of an alcoholic and what he called Miracle Valley, Arizona. John or not, you have what they call the Toronto Blessing out of Toronto, Canada, and John or not was, was uh, head pastor of the Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. You had the Toronto Blessing, you had something that they called the Vineyard, and they have vineyard churches all over America, and every one of those are charismatics. And then they have the Brownsville, Florida blessing, and that's that nutty laughing thing that Rodney Howard Brown had where they'd all fall on the floor and just start cackling and laughing. Looked like the biggest bunch of fools in the world. We was watching them one night. Now, this is one of John, John R. Not is responsible for a lot of this going on in America. What happens is there's a transference of his anointing where not only do you see it, not only do you experience it for yourself, but you're going to take it home to your people. That's John R. Not. Another thing that hinders receiving the Holy Spirit or anointing is people pray all the time. Yeah, that's hindering the Holy Spirit. You're praying too much. Just start gobbling and gaggling and making noises and sounds, and that's Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, we're going to go for it. We're going to try to do our part to bring the kingdom of God here. And wouldn't it be wonderful if the Lord would start to move in power and restore the church to its proper place and make us the head and not the tail? That's John R. Not. He kind of one of the guys that started at the head and not the tail. Well, that's what Zeus was said to be, the head and not the tail. And God says, that's the church, but kingdom of God is the church. 
that are not in his wife gave approval to a woman's report of a divine message from Jesus that she should leave her husband because she was like a stone because he was like a stone around her neck so that's okay if your husband's like a stone around your neck then leave him don't even don't even entertain the thought you that you might be a counterfeit that's what in other words don't be don't entertain the thought if you're a charismatic and you're lying that you might be lying and then he says, Jesus said, go pray for Sarah. This is a girl. Go pray for Sarah, your friend. I'm going to heal her. To the enthusiastic applause, Arnott continues, that girl, totally incapacitated, paralyzed and blind after two and a half years of, of soaking prayer, got up singing. I don't know what soaking prayer is, do you? She got up singing. Sadly, however, Arnott's story plays fast and loose with the truth. Sarah was not totally incapacitated, paralyzed, or blind. Sarah Lilliman's doctors had diagnosed significant psychosomatic emotional problems underlying her physical problems. Jesus did not heal Lilliman as he supposedly promised her friend he would do. And when Arnott's associate was interviewed, he confessed that he has not done any investigation. Today, despite the broad circulation of this story by Arnott and his associates as evidence of God's power in Toronto, blessings, Sarah Lilliman, Sarah Lilliman is still, as before, legally blind. So he claims to heal a woman from her blindness. And people have asked me, I had a guy ask me on the phone last night, what about all these verified things that Benny Hinn healed these people. I said, have you ever saw the verification? Have you ever talked to the doctors? That's not happening. They make these things up. If a man is going to lie about the scriptures, you think he won't lie about this stuff? Yes, he will. They, they're out and out liars. One of my most unfavorite people here is, I've got him here, is John Avanzini. Whenever Paul Crouch wants to pump the crowd for money, he calls Evanzini, who has got ruts in his face about two inches deep, and he's got his hair pitch black. I mean, it ain't nothing like an old man trying to look like a young man. I mean, I walked up to Johnny Cash in a drugstore one day here, and I thought, God, this guy looks like somebody ran over him with a tractor, and his hair is pitch black, you know. They don't look in person like they look like, a, like they're on TV or on stage, do they? No. If you've been around them, you know that. All right. John Avanzini. Jesus had an expensive ministry. That, that cross proved a three-fold dimension of redemption, 30, 60, and 100-fold. That's what the cross was for. When Avanzini uses Mark the 10th chapter where the scripture says, turn over and I'll show you what he uses. And this is one of his favorite verses. Mark 10. They take the Bible and they use these verses and twist them all to pieces. I've watched Avanzini and they, they bring him in to pray the hundredfold blessing. And he comes in and tells the people, if you'll give your money to TBN or DBN, we call it Devil's Broadcasting Network, You'll have a hundredfold return. <laughs> See, somebody needs to tell off on these guys. They're liars, liar, liar, pants on fire. That's what you are. All right. Now, here in Mark, the 10th chapter, Mark 10, and Peter says here, Jesus got through saying, well, let's back up a little. I'll show you what Fred Price said. And he was very serious. And the disciples were astonished at his words in verse 24. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is, is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Because he just got through talking to the rich young ruler. And he said, Sell all that you have and give to the poor. Because the man had a covetous heart. And then Jesus says in verse 25, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Well, Fred Price said one time, I heard him say this. I watched him on TV say this. Well, they had real big needles in that damn time. <laughs> you see, they had these giants. Now, giants, they had giants that were nine foot six like Goliath, but it doesn't take a needle 
with an eye that's this big so a camel can walk through it. I mean, you know, what idiocy. You've got to be an idiot to believe a man that says something like that. And the people are going, he actually said that and he wasn't joking, he meant it. I'm sorry, but it takes the same size needle to sew clothes for a nine foot six giant as it does for a four foot six person. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. But not many wise, not many mighty, not many noble in this world are called, not many rich are called. Now, Joseph of Arimathea was rich. Abraham was rich, but most of the people in his household were poor. Job was rich, but his servants weren't rich. Where do they come up with that? Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And this is where John Abanzini comes in. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he. Now this is where he says the hundredfold blessing comes in. If you send us $10, God's going to send you $1,000 back. That man is a liar. John M. Benzini, by the way, is the one, this fellow in Fort Worth said he was a uh, pest, had a pest, he worked for a pest control company and went out to have Benzini's church to spray it for charismatics, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you say, Jim, why are you laughing at Deb? I'd rather laugh than cry, you know. But he said he had a picture of Jesus in his foyer sitting there on a rock with a bag of gold in each hand. These guys are going to hell. They're not, they're not preachers of the gospel. They're heathens. And this is a big, big, big organization. They're not just down the street here. It's not just up here across from the old house of cash. It's not just Trinity Music City. They're all over the world. They telecast out of California, out of, out of Dallas, out of Atlanta, out of Florida, and they're on satellites that's going all over the world into Africa, into Russia, and China, and South America. No, they're very big, and they're seducing and lying to people and stealing their money, and all those big shots live like billionaires. Not millionaires, billionaires. The last count I had, Paul Crouch had something like 37 super mansions, six, eight, ten million dollars each all over the world. They get that money from the poor and the downtrodden and the needy by saying, you can just speak it with your mouth and you can just send me your money and God will make you rich. If I send you my, my money, God's going to make you rich. Isn't he? No, God's not going to make you rich. You're going to make yourself rich. Then he says, but he shall receive an hundredfold. If you leave everything for Christ, you'll leave You'll receive a hundredfold. Well, if you're going to receive a hundredfold, you're going to have to leave that if it's literal, aren't you? Huh? A hundredfold now in this time. Houses. See? See, you're going to get a hundred houses if you leave your house. And brethren. Wait a minute. If the houses are literal, the brothers are literal, aren't they? But who is my brothers and my sisters? Those that do the will of the Father. So the 